And today we have the privilege of having Steve Tarani, blade expert and fitness instructor and trainer, here with us today. He's going to be talking about his book, Pre-Fence, The 90% Advantage. A lot of great things that 511 came out with, the Pre-Fence line, a lot of other products. They worked directly with Steve Tarani to develop. A little bit of background on me from the strong martial arts uh, uh, background and uh, experience uh, both here in the U.S. and overseas. Uh, I worked as a federal contractor for many years and uh, eventually was an employee for the Department of Defense and I worked uh, in the Intel community for quite a bit. I still do contract work um, and uh, I uh, also work as a protective agent for uh, companies here uh, locally and overseas and um, the experience that uh, I, I work with the guy and the guys I work with and what we do, uh, uh, I always believe that developing product should be a result of that experience. So in other words, uh, function uh, makes the form. Right. And when did, I know that your experience with not Karambit and everything like that, when did the transition go from more offensive to more defensive than prefense? Well, everybody, uh, you know, when you say, when something bad happens, I'll give you an example. Something bad happens, most people go for, um, you know, I'm either going to dial 911 or I'm going to handle it myself. If you dial 911, you sit there and wait for help. Yeah. If you do it yourself, you have only two choices. That is either some type of kung fu, spinning monkey, back kick to the head, or gun fu, ching ching pow system, you know. <laughs> and um, if you don't have one of those two, then you are physically ineffective. But what about a third option? What if you could hear it, see it, smell it coming before it caught you off uh, by surprise and you had to react to it? So rather than react to something, how much more power do you have uh, in control of the threat if you uh, are ahead of the the action power up oh, sorry the power action reaction curve absolutely absolutely and now keep keeping those ideas in mind how do how are you able to integrate that with the evolution shooting what happens is in this event um, I'm sure you heard the whole story already no, we want to hear it again. I won't go deep into it but uh, <laughs> you know it brings together three worlds you know um, uh, let's say you're, I'll give you scenarios. It's be, rather than generally describe, it's best to give you a specific yes. scenario. So let's say you're a you're a, a, a SWAT guy, and you come in, you kick the door, dig your corner, guns up, and you see uh, a threat, and it's a shoot, and you've identified that this is a shoot, and you start to take up the slack on the trigger, and it will go to scenario number two. Scenario number two, you're a competition shooter, and they've You've, uh, you've figured out what you need to do here on the line, and the buzzer goes off, you come out of the holster, take up the slack in your trigger, if there is any. <laughs> and at that point, what is the difference in shooting? Nothing, right? There is no difference. The decision's been made on the tactical right. side, the decisions have been made, the buzzer's gone off on the competition side. Yeah. Well, what we mean by the evolution of shooting is, we have a lot of tactical uh, officers, operators, uh, DOD, Leo, whatever you wanna, whatever your background is, and we're trained conventionally, having worked for Uncle Sam for so many years, you're uh, institutionally trained, yes. right? And to the, to the uh, maximum ability of the system, right? right? Which is uh, developed in a tactical manner, right? right? And a lot of times, some of my teachers would say, boy, this is the way we've been doing it since World War One, and this is the way we're gonna do it forever, yeah, you know? Absolutely. Right? That's, hey, bro, the, that's what it, you bro. get, right? Yeah. Uh, now you here you have the competition world, which the tactical guys uh, kind of snub their nose to because, hey, you know, it's a bunch of gamers, Games. and if you do all that gaming stuff, you're gonna end up killing yourself and all this. Well, the competition shooters, I challenge anybody to find a faster, more accurate shooter than a competition shooter. Absolutely. So why not take what the competition shooters do and develop those skills and combine it with the tactical world Absolutely. and what do you get? Absolutely. I mean, the level and the efficiency and the skill and confidence of your, now you add that under the tactical umbrella, it raises your raises the bar. Effectiveness, right? absolutely. So the concept behind this is, okay, now you got a gun, you know, we're working with the top guys, right? The top carbine guy, the top, uh, no, no top, question yeah. he's the top pistol guy. So, <laughs> so 26 time world champion, yeah. you never could like, find better than that, right? Clears it up. So, and I'm handling all the non-ballistic stuff, right? So it, what we, the whole overarching concept here is to go from 200 yards effective range, because you have to identify your threat, to bad breath range, years, years of my distance. And yeah. not all the time do you have access to a firearm. Right. So if you don't have your carbine, you know, maybe your pistol becomes your primary. You don't have a pistol, well, what else do you got? You got a lot of other things. Those are non-ballistic weapons. Edge weapons, impact weapons, even your, your bare hands. And what I consider the most powerful weapon of all, right up here, right? right? So this is the whole concept of this event from one range to about 200 yards.